Hey everybody, welcome to the We Are Worship podcast. My name is Jesse Phillips, and this is my friend Brandon. Say hey, Brandon. Hey, Brandon. <laughs> Perfect. Oh. <laughs> so Brandon's going to show us a little bit about keys and all that in worship today. Uh, just introduce yourself to the crowd. My name is Brandon, a.k.a. Bilbo Baggins. Bilbo Baggins. That's not correct, <laughs> but that is my email name. I did call him that in college, so. Yes. Which, by um, the way, me and Brandon go back. I'm going to see if we can find like an old picture of you. But anyway, me and Brandon played in a band together in college, which is fun. And I called him Bilbo Baggins every now and then. That's very so. true. So um, I played keys on this worship band with Jesse, and I've been playing keys for a while uh, in the worship world. And uh, I'm just passionate about um, anything that involves programming, producing keys. But I'm also a worship leader at a church called Long Hollow down the road in Hendersonville, Tennessee. And um, so I'm the youth worship pastor and also part of the creative team and get to kind of speak into the vision of um, just the creativity of what God's doing at Long Hollow. So we're doing albums and records and constantly releasing stuff, um, but we also get to lead worship every, every single week. And so it's great. Uh, yeah, Brandon, so show us a little bit about what you got going on over here. So in the worship world, a lot of keys players are transitioning from you know playing a real grand or an upright piano to now um, using a, a keyboard controller, which essentially uh, what a controller is, it, is it does just that. It controls sounds that are coming from somewhere else. Um, and so this keyboard right here, um, it's a Graphite 49. And basically I have this connected to my laptop through a USB. So it's essentially a USB cable right into the computer. Um, some keyboards don't have that capability, but they'll run something called MIDI. So MIDI essentially just allows you as a keys player to use your keyboard um, as a controller to where there aren't any sounds in the keyboard you're using, they're actually coming from somewhere else. And so it just allows you to use your keyboard um, to access those sounds. And so um, what I'm using on my laptop is a program called MainStage, which uh, basically acts as like a hub for all of my sounds that I, that I want to use live um, while I'm leading worship. And so I have um, all different kinds of patches um, of sounds from pianos to roads to pads to synths and to any other kind of stuff that you want to use, uh, depending on the you know your worship set that you're leading with. Then from there, I have another USB cable running to what we call an interface that essentially allows you to be heard from your laptop to the interface to uh, whatever soundboard that you're using um, in your church. And so um, interface, um, essentially it's connected by USB and then on the back of it um, is just a left and right output. So the left side of your key stuff and the right side. And so typically you'll run those two lines out of your interface into um, either two direct boxes or stereo DI and then from there to the soundboard. So let me show you just a couple of different patches that I have going on here in main stage, uh, which by the way, this is on the app store uh, for 30 bucks. It is probably the best 30 bucks I've ever spent um, because you buy the program main stage and it already has tons of sounds um, in this software. So within main stage, um, there's so many different sounds that you can use. Um, I mean, this is a program that you can get on the App Store for 30 bucks. And I'm just gonna show you some of the sounds that I've kind of put together, spent some time layering different stuff um, to get specific sounds um, just for this genre of, of worship. I've got all kinds of stuff as far as different pianos, different roads, different pads different synths and just some kind of other random sounds. And so this is just a standard piano that I've got going on. It's, it's one of the main stage pianos called Steinway Hall with a little pad layered underneath it just to fill in that space a little more called Tranquil Horizon. And it's good for like, for instance, a song like 10,000 Reasons. For piano stuff, I'll tend to um, try not to really overplay a whole lot because in the keys world, especially uh, you know in worship, 
um, you know, there's so many other instruments going on that I want to kind of stay out of the way, um, you know, for the most part. And I want to be super intentional with every single part that I'm playing. I always try to just be overly simple with what I, I'm doing. Um, you know, the tendency is for a keys player that, you know, if it's a slower song, you know, place, you know, slower and simpler, but if it's a fast song that, you know, that I've got to, I've got to kind of overplay and match the tempo of the song. It's kind of the opposite to where, um, for me, any keys player, what, what you're doing is um, you're adding the dessert to this entire course of a meal. And so on this plate, you have these, you know, different things that you don't want just one of those. You've got to um, layer those things together to get something even tastier. And so in the keys world, that's what I like doing is layering different sounds together. Um, like I just showed you with that piano and pad. Um, and now let's go to another one that is a piano and pad, but it has a little bit of delay. For instance, the song Cornerstone, you know, that, that main hook of the song, I like to add a little bit of a dotted eighth note delay. Uh, as, as well as a stereo delay with an eighth note on the right and a quarter on the left. And it kind of gives it this ping pong um, type of sound with that hook uh, that just kind of freshens it up a little bit. So here it is. So that's essentially, um, you know, you're letting the delay do a lot of the work for you and you're just doing that simple hook over and over that may not seem um, all that exciting, but it, you know, it's exactly what that song needs. You wanna serve the song with your keys playing. So another section that I have in main stage is called pads, uh, which I'll use a lot of pads for a few different reasons. Uh, one of them being just any transitions from song to song or in the middle of somebody's prayer. Uh, I'll use pads to just kind of fill up uh, just some space and kind of create this, uh, this atmosphere uh, for whatever is going on in the room. Um, to me, I love to not have any dead space in, uh, in a worship service and, and you know these pads are great ways to kind of keep the momentum moving. And so here's one that's essentially Again, all these are main stage sounds, but I've got two different pads uh, layered together. One's called blur pad, the other is called circular shift, and it kind of creates more of this airy type of pad. So I'm in the key of C, and um, I'll just play a little bit for you. Uh, but a lot of times in the keys world too, if if you have two keyboard players um, playing in your band, like maybe one's just playing a lot of piano stuff, and um, and you're doing more of kind of the aux keys thing, um, I'll you know sometimes I'll just pull up a pad sound, and that's the only sound that I'm playing for a particular song, and I'm totally okay with that. Like you've got to be okay as a keys player. Um, to be in the background, you know what I mean? A lot of times your part isn't gonna be this prominent hook that's going on. Sometimes you just need to lay down uh, just a pad this entire song to fill up a lot of that space. You know, sometimes it can be a little overwhelming just thinking about all the different possibilities of sounds and patches that you can use in your worship set. But just remember, at the end of the day, you want to serve those songs with um, 
you know, those intentional patches that you're using. The way that you're playing matters. The sounds that you pick, that matters. So, you know, be intentional uh, with everything that you're doing in, you know, this keys world uh, because it's important. It's vital to just the overall sound uh, of a worship team. So there you have it. A little bit about keys from the master himself, Brandon Sharp. Brandon, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it was really cool to hear about your rig and some of the sounds you use. And um, actually for you guys watching and listening, uh, Brandon has been kind enough to give us that file, that main stage file, uh, for free for download. So uh, follow We Are Worship uh, at We Are Worship USA on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, uh, all those things. And we'll tell you a little bit more about how to get that later on. But uh, what all's in that yeah. file? So it's essentially, you know, a lot of the sounds that we went through today, but even more. And really just acts as a template for you, uh, whether, you know, you've been playing keys for a long time or you're just starting out, um, you know, you can open up this session, this file, and be ready to go with all these individual patches um, to just serve those songs. Very cool. I mean, Brandon, thanks so much for, for doing that. That'll be a great starting point. <laughs> Ah, got it. Will it be? Uh, it will be an awesome starting point uh, for any Keys players looking for uh, sounds to use in worship. But Brandon, thanks so much for your time. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, we'll catch you next time.